Good afternoon, dear students. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear. Okay, good. Good afternoon, Thank you, Thank you for feedback. Okay, let's start. <clears throat> uh, so we are going to continue from our last lessons. Uh, we discussed uh, uh, the, the four bar mechanism and type of four bar mechanism and degree of freedom of a mechanism. So we were continuing now. Uh, so with the uh, degree of freedom, uh, of mechanism and we uh, we were on this page so you see there's a mechanism here <clears throat> and you there are some some special planar mechanism so some special planar mechanism and let's use the beer we can say this is here the, the, the I mean, if we check the, the degree of freedom of the mechanism, this is the, uh, this is link one, and let's say this is two, and this is uh, three, and this is four, sorry, this is, okay, four, and this is five. So there's five mechanism, one, two, three, four, five. So according to our equations, uh, degree of freedom is equal uh, three times n minus one, mm, minus two times, two times uh, <coughs> joint primary, and minus joint higher level. So here we have, <coughs> if we check, here we have n is a, a number of the um, uh, links are five, five, and the joints primary is equal one two three four five six is equal six so and the joint of higher uh, order is equal zero so if we put into the equations so this is equal three times three times here uh, six minus uh, one is five Okay, and here we have uh, uh, two times um, two times uh, so this is your five this is five by four it must be four huh four okay four here so two times six minus zero so is equal uh, 12 minus uh, 12 
12 is equal zero. So the degree of freedom is equal zero. <clears throat> so, and uh, so it doesn't. Uh, uh, so, uh, so okay. This is degree of freedom. So if we come to this mechanism, you see here. So degrees with uh, Gerber equations due to uh, unequal geometries. Degree of freedom. Let's have one, three. Sorry, one, one. This is the grounded link. And he, let's say, two, three, and this is four, and this is five here. So again, five link bar. Uh, and then if you write the uh, uh, equations, the degree of freedom, so then we can say how many uh, we have five, three times four, five minus one is four, and minus two times uh, five, uh, uh, two times uh, this one. So how many how many joints we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. Two times six. Okay, six minus zero joint higher order zero. So is equal <clears throat> twelve. 12 minus 12. So equals zero. So this is here, why, 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 why is it one? So here we have, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six is correct, six. And the member, one, two, three, four, five, okay. So five, uh, <clears throat> five minus one is equal uh, four. Uh, three times four, twelve. This is also zero. So this is, in my opinion, it's not correct. It is zero, but it works. Degree of freedom because degree of freedom because it's it's work, huh? So why it's work because those are parallel to each other. You see, lengths are equal and are parallel to each other. So therefore, this is a, uh, a special mechanism. So there are some cases like this. Even if we have degree of freedom zero, could be that the, uh, because of the special relation within the uh, links, the mechanism uh, works. I mean, they can can uh, move. <clears throat> so, if we come to this mechanism here, this is also a gear mechanism. Let's say we have a two gear here or full joint, pure rolling, no slip, could be also to two uh, to the different disc uh, are uh, touching to each other without uh, um, without slip. So then, so let's have, so we have here the member one, and this is also the member one, and this is member two, and this is member uh, three, so three, and so let's write here, n is equal three, three, okay, and, <clears throat> Joint primary is equal one, two, 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 and joint higher order is equal like here, you see here in the middle. So this is the one. So then if we <clears throat> uh, write the equations for the degree of freedom is equal for the here gear system is equal. So three times, three times uh, n minus one, n is uh, two, three minus one is two. So then 
minus two times uh, two times two because we have two uh, uh, two <clears throat> revolute joint here and then minus we have one uh, higher uh, order joint so minus one so that makes uh, uh, two times three is six six and minus two times two four and minus one five five so is equal one hmm? so so degree of freedom is one okay so it uh, works also in the practice it works okay so mm, uh, now i'm going to talk about uh, the kinematic chains we mentioned it already that uh, we said machine machine so uh, machine contents uh, mechanism has some mechanism in it so mechan mechanism and <clears throat> So mechanism, if we talk about the mechanism, mechanism, kinematic model, we said kinematic model, kinematic, kinematic model, we already talked about model, and then we said also kinematic chain. Kinematic chain. So, what is kinematic chain? What do we mean? Uh, what do we mean? So this is a kinematic chain. Eh? So here, this is a kinematic chain. And so this is the, all of them are kinematic chains. So all the valid eight bar, one degree of freedom uh, kinematic change. Eight bar, that means the uh, kinematic change consists of eight bar. So we can say it's here the one, two, one, two, three, three, uh, four, five, uh, six, seven, uh, somewhere eight, and this is five, and there's eight. So one more somewhere, this is the eight, huh? One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, okay, eight. And here also, one, uh, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. So, but what is, what is different if we, and what is different between those kinematic chain? You see, the uh, the uh, the uh, links are different. Here we have, for example, uh, one, two, three, four uh, ternary uh, uh, link and uh, one, two, three, uh, four binary link. Here we have one two three four binary link and one two three four uh, ternary link but uh, the structure is different so the connections are different so uh, using all these possibilities we create uh, around uh, 12, uh, 16 16 uh, different kinematic change for the uh, eight bar mechanism uh, and kinematic chain means if it's a, like we, we talked this is said this is the four bar mechanism this was our famous four bar mechanism
let's say this is the crank and this is the coupler and this is the rocker okay <clears throat> so this is mechanism this we call mechanism mechanism okay and uh, we said the member one is grounded here and this is uh, two and this is three and this is four four bar mechanism so the kinematic chain of the mechanism or concept or main kinematic chain is like this so we said this is member two three four and one and in kinematic change no one is grounded of the members of the links so this is here one uh, two three and four four bar mechanism so no one is grounded depending on the grounded link we achieve different mechanism that means different properties different kinematic properties we can achieve uh, if we change the uh, link which we ground so uh, i hope it is clear what we are meaning what we are trying to say if we say what is kinematic chain and what is kinematic chain and what is mechanism and what is kinematic model and so on all these uh, definitions all these uh, terms must be clear actually so and we have uh, for the four bar mechanism we have only one uh, one chain kinematic chains so there is no other possibilities we cannot i mean uh, change it so if we, if we have six bar mechanism then we will have different so five bar six bar or eight seven bar or eight bar we can create different uh, different uh, chain uh, uh, comparing to to each other so transforming a four bar uh, crank rocker to a crank slider so you may remember this was crank a uh, crank rocker mechanism so this crank rocker mechanism what means that if we drive this crank here so in that direction and this rocker makes such a oscillation between two limits so those are the limits yet this is the, let's say this is the one and this is the two and it moves between one and two uh, during the member two i mean the crank fully rotates so this is crank rocker mechanism so if you want to uh, if you need such a motion that, that means the oscillation between two angle so two angle that i mean so we can hear that I, this is the angle one and this is the angle two huh? so this is let's say theta one uh, theta one and this is theta two theta two so here in between is delta theta there is such type of application in the industry so during one of the links are fully rotate the the other one uh, make oscillation uh, 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 semi semi rotary motion and <clears throat> the the angle the delta delta theta is defined already so in between uh, fulfill the motion the uh, say, say oscillation so 
This is one type of mechanism. We call it uh, crank rocker mechanism. This is another one. This is crank slider. So crank slider mechanism. That means one glide is one member is fully rotating and the other one uh, is uh, as undergoes the linear, linear motion. So linear motion. Linear, linear motion. So this is so uh, uh, also important to uh, see the linear motion. Uh, we we use this mechanism in, in internal combustion engine and in compressor piston compressor, for example. And here we have the linear length of the linear motion. I'm here in between. This is the limits of the motion of the linear motion. Let's say the the initial position and the final position here. So in between, the slider block is moving. <clears throat> So we use this mechanism when we need uh, to convert the rotary motion into the linear motion. So it is interesting from, from this side. So, you know, we have here, let's say we, we fully rotate one link and must be so in line here. So, and since this member is rotating like this, and the other one moving, let's say left and right. Huh? So we can show it with the ground indication. So that means the rotary motion, rotary motion is converted into the linear motion or convert into the mechanical linear motion. So there are such type of application in industry. You know, the, if you if you uh, think about the machines, the machines consist of several motion because we need the motion within the machine in order to fulfill the function. That means the process or production or assembly. So therefore, we need the motions and the motions generally can be divided in linear motion, rotary motion, or semi-rotary motion, or the mixed. So therefore, the motion is for us as engineers very important to analyze the motion or to make sentences. That means, uh, to make sentences, that means we, let's say, maybe we face a problem. So we have to design a mechanism where we have the uh, oscilla oscilla um, oscillation, uh, say the, with the, with angle delta theta, let's say 60 degrees, and uh, against uh, for uh, full rotation. So we have to design it. Hmm? Or we have here the uh, rotary motion. This rotary motion, for example, has to has to be converted into the linear motion, and the limits of the linear motion is important. Let's say the uh, initial position and the final position and so on. <clears throat> so all those uh, type of information uh, and the facilities and uh, the possibilities we need to design the machine. And therefore we say this is theory of the machine, basics of the machines. <clears throat> but in order to understand these lessons, first of all, uh, you need the, the kinematic analysis, you need uh, kinetostatic analysis, uh, and uh, also mathematic and geometry. Eh? So another mechanism here transforming the crank slider to uh, scotch yoke. This is another special mechanism developed in the industry. Uh, developed in the industry. So you see, we have here the crank, which is rotate, sorry. Crank is rotating like this here. And here we have the linear motion. 
this link is uh, undergoes linear motion. Rotary motion uh, converted into the linear motion. And the same here. Huh? So, so this is the crank to an effective link here and the slider and here. <clears throat> but <clears throat> we have a different curve you see here. Huh? This is different curve. This is we, we, here we have a curve. This is not a curve. This is uh, uh, say the uh, uh, straight line and uh, therefore different behavior. Different behavior. Regarding the force transmission, we will talk about the, later on the transmission, transmission angle, and uh, because uh, it, 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 it doesn't um, is not enough. If we say we uh, uh, design a mechanism, we have designed a mechanism, and this mechanism can uh, supply uh, uh, the needed motion. The motion is not, uh, they say the only the motion is not enough. So it must be analyzed uh, regarding the uh, kinematic, that means the velocity and the acceleration. And then later on, uh, after acceleration, uh, uh, regarding the kinetics forces acting on this, um, uh, let's say on the, um, on this grounded part here. So the forces are important. Because forces here we have unbalanced forces regard, because of the uh, accelerated motion uh, and the unbalanced motion uh, creates the vibration and vibration creates noisy and uh, there are there are some some additional problems involved in the design. Okay, so this is. Uh, Another type of mechanism, and this is we, can, we, we call come follower mechanism. So come, this is come, this we call come here, here come, come mechanism, the come, and this is the follower. Eh? This is follower, and this is come here. So roll slide half joint, the roll slide. This is joint. Uh, higher order. So, uh, if we analyze this one for the if for a certain time, so that means actually it is created or developed uh, uh, from a, a four bar mechanism. So, you can easily say uh, this the, the uh, center of curvature here. Let's take another color here. So the red one is uh, better. So this is curvature, and this is the center of this curvature here. So, and this is the also center of the curvature, those touching each other here and at that point. So then uh, you can easily say this is uh, uh, type of four bar mechanism developed from a four bar mechanism, like you see here, huh? like you see here in this picture. So, this is effective link two, and this is effective link link three, effective link uh, four, and so. Um, uh, the uh, next one and the first one is here is the one. The first one is the grounded, as you see here. So this is we can say this is grounded one here. Huh? So therefore, this is four bar mechanism. So the come follower mechanism has an effective four bar equivalent. So this mechanism we call the equivalent. Hmm? So. Uh, equivalent. Equivalent mechanism. And later uh, in our lesson, we will talk about the uh, CAM mechanism, 
how can we design the camera mechanism for a certain, for a given uh, task, for example. Uh? <clears throat> and there are different type of uh, cam mechanism. So one of them is used, still used. Maybe I can I can show you that. Uh, uh, let's see. Here is a video. All right. And so here. Namaste. In this video, I am going to talk about different types of cam and follower mechanism in SOLIDWORKS. So here you will see a knife edge follower mechanism. You will see knife edge follower very less in real life. Remember, a knife edge follower produces very high. So you see the mechanism, the curve here, the, uh, the, that means the cam, and this is the follower. And if it is turned, Let's see whether we have turning. So, so if it is turned like this, so we create uh, the linear motion here, up and down. Huh? So let's do it once more. So, Okay, so this is not too much. Uh, this is an interesting example here regarding the mechanism. You see, this is a, a cam mechanism. Here under the uh, penguins, you see. or the music and so on. You can use in different, uh, there's, there's different application in the praxis uh, or industry. Okay, double cam mechanism maybe could be interesting for you. Here you see this is a double cam mechanism. Here inside there is a cam, you see here. And, and outside there is also a cam here, which follows that. So many, many different type of mechanism. You can, you can check the videos and uh, see. And you see the, the mechanism used in the in different, uh, let's say, industrial area for different application. Okay. So it's enough, huh? So let's come to the slides, okay. And so uh, another topic is uh, we have here the, the, the uh, six bar mechanism. You see the uh, six bar mechanism like Like you are seeing, here, one, two, three, four, five, six, six bar mechanism. And based on the type of the selected type of the links, uh, 
uh, Biner or Ternier, uh, we can we can create different uh, kinematic change. So this is this is a this is a kinematic chain. This is another kinematic change, and this is another kinematic chain, and this is also and this two three two uh, three one two three has degree of freedom one, and the, this has degree of freedom zero. That means so if it is degree of freedom zero, it doesn't work. It cannot work. I mean, eh? so. Uh, uh, during the uh, design age, design design uh, design, uh, uh, design period, we have to consider so uh, what what type of motion we are going to uh, to create, uh, and uh, uh, to, in order to create this motion, so uh, uh, what could be the mechanism and the uh, number of the uh, uh, links is it four bar or the five bar or the six bar or the seven bar or the eight bar and if it is uh, eight bar or six bar um, uh, is do we have uh, by how many how many we have binary or ternary uh, link and so on all those uh, details has to be considered regarding the motion which we needed <clears throat> and which we have to apply Okay, this is kinematic chain. Now, if we if we want to create a mechanism using this kinematic chain, for example, here as this one, how can we establish or how can we develop the mechanism using this chain? So that means it's like this. Eh? We have let's use the blue one. We have let's fix the ground the, the member one. So if this membrane has to be grounded, that means we need two, uh, two primary jo joint. Primary joint has to be grounded. Three pr primary joint has to be grounded like this. Huh? So. Okay, then we have here the link one, and link two is somewhere here, so it must be. I mean, Okay, this is here. And we have here also another one. Link and here also another one link. So then this is a tenier link. So this is our mechanism. Hmm? So then if I if I start to turn here, that means as crank. If when I use this member as crank, so then uh, it runs fully. I mean, the, the, the mechanism uh, can fulfill the motion criteria. That means the degree of freedom. So to check it, we can say, okay, let's write here one. And this is the one, and this is also one member one. This is member two, let's say this is member uh, three, and this is four, and this is five, and this is six. So six, six, six bar mechanism. Hmm? <clears throat> so the, the links, uh, uh, five links are the binary, and uh, one of them is the, uh, one is the, the uh, ternary. So let's write the mem uh, number of the uh, links. This is six here, we know that. And the joint primary is equal, how many? Let's see that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Huh? Seven, okay, seven. And do we have a joint higher order? 
No, we don't have zero. Okay, then let's uh, use the equations, using the equations, check whether the uh, degree of freedom is one or not. F is equal, coming from the formula, three times uh, six minus one, five, five, okay. Minus two times mm -hmm. primary joint, this is 14. Uh, seven, sorry, seven times seven and minus higher joint, zero, not. So then F is equal here, right? Three times five is 15, 15 minus two times seven, 14. So then F is equal one. So that means degree of freedom one. So uh, this mechanism can work, no problem. If we drive, if we drive, if we apply the motion uh, of uh, motion uh, to any any member you have here, and any link could be four, three, two, six, four. It doesn't matter. Uh, if we, if we apply the motion, so the mechanism completely start to, to, to run. Okay, and this is also another mechanism. So we can also, there's a chain, uh, and this is another chain here. So we have three different chain, and we can develop the mechanism using this chain, kinematic chain. And it is uh, like like this one, very very easy, no problem. So you can say here for for this one, for example, we can use again the mechanism. So we have here three uh, three grounded uh, uh, joint, revolute joint, three grounded. Revolute joint. So then, uh, then we have here one, this one, and then here we have this one, and here we have also this. Huh? So that means this is also it, it reflects this mechanism reflect this kinematic change. So it is also uh, it has also one degree of freedom because here we have uh, six six bar one 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 this is let's say two three four five and six so like this six uh, the, the the links are six. And the primary joints, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So then, um, but here you see uh, two members, three members are connected to each other. So this is. This, uh, this 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 has this is more than one here. So therefore we have to write here one more. So one uh, joint is between three and four. The other one is the four and five. So therefore seven. So seven is the same here, and no higher order, and there is no joint with higher order. So the it. Uh, uh, gives us also degree of freedom as one, uh, and therefore it is uh, also a, a, a normal working mechanism. Okay, so then let's continue here. So this is another mechanism, a special mechanism. Uh, Genev, uh, Genev, uh, Genev mechanism. Uh, so 
this one is rotating, the, the, the two is rotating, and the three is follower. Uh, uh, and this we, we call genetic field, and this is crank here. Uh, and here is this uh, uh, grounded, and he is also grounded. So normally, the transfer function, we will see the transfer function during this period. The, it doesn't mo move, so uh, because because of if uh, I mean from this uh, uh, sorry so let's let's mark it and explain it okay so uh, between so this angle here. During this angle, rotation here, this rotates, right? there is no motion. There is no motion because you can you can easily see that that the uh, crank here, let's say, start to move. In, if it is if it, uh, okay, let's say the crank is the, the pin is here somewhere. And because it, it is turning in that direction, uh, counterclockwise. So from from this point on that, there is the the the, the uh, Genet wheel cannot move. Huh? Uh, is stop stop the mo motion, but the crank is rotating continuously, rotating, and between uh, between this angle. So this it rotates the, the Geneva wheel is rotates. So the motion uh, diagram we can indicate like this. So we have such type of application industry. Therefore, it is important for us. So let's say this is the angle here from the crank. This phi from 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 zero to 360 one cycle huh? so it is rotating and it is not rotating and again rotating so this is the motion of this is the motion of the uh, Genève wheel Genève wheel so it start to move and stay without motion it and then again start to move so this is the transfer function but we will talk about later about the transfer function not yet so for stop genev mechanisms it, uh, I mean, the, the, the wheel, the guinea wheel is uh, turning and stopping, turning and stopping. That means this is the turning part, it is the stopping part. So in some application machines, we need those type of motion. Like indexing table, for example. It, it uh, turns and stay and uh, turn and stop, turn and stop for a certain angle. So I can show you the application, maybe. You can understand much more better. So uh, Okay, this is like this, huh? So let's see this one. So you see, the crank is always rotating, and but the let's say the the, the Genève wheel doesn't move. Move, stop. Move, stop. Move, stop. So it is an interesting application for indexing table. 
indexing table, that means there's a table and on this table there are many station working station and uh, uh, during the uh, during the working in these stations so the table must be stopped and if the stations finish the works so uh, uh, then the table has to turn for the next station so it's an interesting application for the uh, in mechanical engineering Okay, so then let's come again here. So there are many other mechanisms, like here, the Rache and Powell mechanism, that in start, stop, start, stop. So if we, if we, uh, the uh, Rache in that direction, move in that direction, there is no motion. If we move it in that direction, so, in that uh, oh, sorry in that direction so the, the uh, rache wheel starts to turn but in that direction not huh? so the, the, this color in that direction not so uh, therefore only in one direction we can turn this wheel this ratchet wheel only in one direction and we have here a locking power a locking mechanism so that means it cannot turn by itself we lock it so all those type of mechanism uh, as uh, uh, we apply in the mechanical engineering so here we have another mechanism uh, so you see this, this is the crank here rotating like Let's say the here counterclockwise is rotating like this. So since it is rotating, so this uh, this part here undergoes rotary motion, sorry, linear motion, and uh, if it turns in that direction, so then back with this and uh, forwards in this and so on, we have here linear uh, in term. Uh, intermittent motion, uh, say comparable with Genev mechanisms. Because Genev mechanism, it is rotary. This is, this is not rotary, this is linear. Let's say we have a transfer band and the band has to be stopped and move like this. So it moves and stop and moves and stops and so on. So, uh, stop and go stop and go stop and go motion and we use this type of motion in production line and assembly line because it must be somehow the the uh, the work uh, has to be done in the working the work stations uh, for, during the during the stopping so when when mechanism is stopped so the 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 station uh, is applying this work and when uh, the work is finished and it starts to turn and so on that means stop and go stop and go uh, it, it is also an interesting application so uh, another kinematic uh, say, uh, mechanism we have here the, you already learned this is a crank uh, slider mechanism so the crank slider mechanism Based on the uh, grounded uh, link, we can create different mechanism. Here, the, the, the one is grounded. Here is the two is grounded. You see, here is three is grounded. Here we have the four is grounded. So depends on the, the link, which one is grounded, we have different mechanisms. So here, slider block translates uh, or slider block has complex motion or a uh, slider block rotates or here slider block is, is stationary and so on so then here we have a uh, step on six bar mechanism so six bar mechanism and kinematic change so this is the uh, the uh, one two three four five six five different uh, mechanisms come from the six bar 
uh, we call it Stefan's six bar inversion or six bar mechanism because the Stefan uh, scientists uh, uh, developed. Okay, types of planar four bar mechanism we already talked about, you know. Uh, here, here, uh, Trank Rocker and uh, the, the, this is the uh, inversion of crank rocker and here's a double a double rocker <clears throat> and, and also here double rocker so then here type planar motion bar, four bar mechanism we have you see different type of mechanism we can develop using the four bar mechanism and this is uh, here also four bar mechanism a parallelogram form or anti-parallelogram for, form and here double parallelogram linkage gives parallel motion pure uh, curvilinear translation uh, is also I mean this is six bar mechanism we already uh, check regarding the degree of freedom and this is uh, that uh, deltoid or a, a kite form so here we have five bar mechanism you see uh, this is the this is the one here uh, let's see the this is one one this is two three four five five bar mechanism and five bar mechanism has a two degree of freedom two degree of freedom and in order to drive that they have to use a gear pair here so that means the the, the gear are uh, has to connect that wheel uh, has to connect it to the to the member two and this has to connect it to the member five that means we have we reduce the degree of freedom from two to the to one okay so the four bar linkage mechanism you know that uh, we use uh, in our uh, we use at home and it has also a mechanism inside uh, and so the, the eccentric crank rocker and uh, eccentric slider uh, crank we can design in that way so that uh, we uh, uh, by applying the rotary motion to the member two we can create here the uh, the oscillation uh, or uh, here we can create rotary say, linear motion like this eccentric slider crank and this is the eccentric crank rocker so that means this is the this is the uh, the part of crank huh? this is the crank but design wise we can develop we can design it like this so and gas pedal mechanism you see in car use the gas pedal mechanism here so this is the uh, gas pedal and the, if we apply the force here so you see we, we can open and close and throttle here uh, using this mechanism and another mechanism you know from the from the car i am in the jack mechanism uh, to uh, uh, to uh, change uh, the uh, tire and so on and Another mechanism, corkscrew mechanism, you know that from, uh, from also we use at home. And here, in the saving mechanism, you see, uh, we have, uh, we, we cut the metals and we use this saving metal saving machine. So this is also, it has an interesting mechanism, like this is crank, uh, crank slider mechanism because it goes I mean, this is this is rotating like this as you see here and it uh, fulfill the it makes the linear motion so in order to cut the tube here or pipe <clears throat> okay hand press mechanism so you see the hand press mechanism uh, this is the the, the uh, powder die here and we have the powder and we, uh, by pushing up and down so we apply the uh, uh, we press the powder and uh, shape it 
So the CAM mechanism I already explained. So this is the CAM and CAM, and this is the rover, and this is the spring, and this is the follower, and we will discuss in a different chapter. So different mechanism you see uh, we use in, in office uh, or in mechanism in, in machines or in order to create a linear motion here. Huh? So for a certain angle, huh? for a certain angle, we can create a linear motion. It's very interesting, 100%, so really linear motion. And here we have log transport or a tractor mounted uh, flow mechanism, so different, many mechanisms. Oh. Okay, so all these mechanisms, I mean, we learned all these mechanisms. Uh, we use in in the machines uh, because of the uh, motion or uh, motion control or power transmission and many 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 applications. <clears throat> So uh, let's make 10 minutes break, and after 10 minutes, we start again, OK? 14, 15, we will start.
So I, uh, I think we can start. Huh? So uh, we, uh, we will discuss a new chapter. Uh, name is scalar and vector uh, quantities. So vector and uh, uh, scalar and vector quantities we use in uh, kinematic, you know, uh, dynamic actually, kinematic and uh, kinetic. And since the mechanism, our theory of machine and the mechanism we use in this uh, uh, lecture uh, needs also kinematic and uh, uh, kinetic, therefore, more or less, we are going to repeat this scalar and vector. What does it mean? Um, later on, we will have some examples regarding the mechanism. So scalar quantities, you, uh, I'm sure you learned it, but uh, as I as I mentioned it, so I'm going to refresh our memory or we refresh our memory. So scalar quantity is fully defined with a magnitude, example, time, temperature, volume, and vector quantities requires both magnitude and the direction, as you know, so displacement, velocity, and force are the examples. <clears throat> and the, the vector uh, uh, representations it represents obviously magnitude, direction, sense. Like this here, you see the see the direction and the sense and the magnitude. I mean the, the angles is the related to the direction, and this is the arrows, the sense, and here the magnitude, the scalar values. So the magnitude, direction, and sense. And <clears throat> uh, vector addition, you, you know, some uh, quantities in mechanic, technical mechanic, must be uh, represented by the by vector. We cannot uh, represent the uh, quantities uh, scalar. Uh, like force acceleration and uh, velocity. So therefore, uh, if we have such a quantities, so we have such a quantities in technical mechanics, so then we need the, uh, sometimes uh, the <clears throat> addition, subtraction, and multiplication, and so on. We said cross product and dot product and all those things. We have to uh, learn how can we do that. So the net effect, the addition of the two vectors, A and B. This is the equation you see here. We can write the equations like this. R is equal, result, resultant vector is equal A plus B. And this is the A, B. And this is the, uh, let's say, the analytic uh, way of calculation. This is the graphical way of calculation. This is A, like this, you see. This is A is parallel to the vector A, and uh, direction and sense, sense must be uh, 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 considered, considered and also be at the B at the end of the A. And so then we have the resultant resultant force like R here. See, resultant, resultant vector R. So, then uh, graphical method, we use the graphical methods. So there are, there are vectors to scale. Uh, so uh, here, the, the lay maybe 60 degrees, and the, this is the magnitude, A500 millimeter, and so on. on. And these are different type of vectors we can uh, draw and show graphically. <clears throat> and Analytical method, uh, analytical method, we use also the, uh, for the vector calculation, we use the, use the triangles and trigonometry when working with two, two vectors. I mean, the, you, you, you know, the, uh, from the C square must be, this is not correct, I'm sorry. So this is not correct, so we have to, here this is must be, Uh -huh. Must be square root, huh? This is not correct here. Yeah, this is 
cosine c, but this is c squared here must be c squared, okay? Okay, now it's correct. Now it is correct, okay. <clears throat> So c squared is equal a squared plus b squared minus two times a b cosine c. So this is cosine theorem or cosine uh, uh, cosine theorem or method. And here is sine theorem. Uh, sine a is over a and sine b over b sine c over c. So is equal the in the diameter of this uh, triangle outside diameter of the triangle and so on. So all these trigonometric relation and function we use in uh, vector calculation. Here, vector components, we can uh, resolve the vectors in two components, uh, like here, fx and fy. This is, let's say this is the vector f, and this is the fx and fy. And uh, uh, you, you may remember, I mean, from the vector calculation, here you said, uh, okay, this is our x and y coordinate system. So, and then let's use another color for the, for the vector. And this, let's say this is our vector. So R, okay. And the, this is the uh, projection on the x-axis here. This is R cosine, cosine theta, isn't it? So this is theta, huh? this is theta, it shows direction of the vector, theta. And this is here, this is sine, R sine uh, theta, okay. R sine theta. That means we can resolve the um, <coughs> vector in <coughs> in 2D in the two components. If it is a 3D vectors, I mean, then we have to resolve in 3D. Like let's say we have here, it could be in 3D. We have uh, the um, I mean the another axis, like um, I can show here. So, yeah. so 3D like this one mm -hmm. so this is the x-axis this is the y-axis and here we have the z-axis and if we have a vector 3d vectors 3d vector like this so then we have to resolve in so and in in x component y component X component and the Z component like this. Huh? This is the, the Z component. This is the X component. This is the Y component of this R vector. This is R. This is R Z, and this is R X, and this is R. Uh, sorry, this is R Y. Okay. And this is the resultant vector of Rx and Ry. So this is, let's say, R prime is equal square root Rx square plus R, I'm oh, sorry, R, R. <clears throat> So R, R Y square and square root. Huh? So like this. Okay. So uh, if we have three vectors, of course we can uh, we can calculate. We can add together summation of three vectors A plus B plus C, and then so. Vector subtraction, G is equal A minus B, or G is equal A plus B, A minus B. So we can write also in that way, same effect as uh, adding uh, negative vectors. So here, 
the difference between vectors quantities. So we can, so uh, G is minus, uh, A is A minus B, but same effect as adding uh, the, a new, a negative vector like this. So, and the negative vectors has the same magnitude, same magnitude, but opposite direction. <laughs> this is, this is, this is B, and this is the negative of B. Sa uh, it is same, same, uh, same direction, same magnitude, but opposite direction. Since I mean this is different, opposite. So vector subtraction. So let's say G is equal A plus minus B, and it is graphically shown like this. A is this one, and B is in that direction. So you see, this is the B here, and this is the negative B eh? here. So I has a mistake here. I here show that okay. here, take it. No. Okay. No, it's correct. <clears throat> so this is negative B. So you know this is the B positive and B negative, as we already this mentioned, the same magnitude, uh, same direction, but different sense. So and here G is equal A minus B, and G is equal A plus B, that means the B is in that direction. So, but if we make this, uh, this summation, so that means G equal, G is equal, uh, normal, G is equal A plus B, but since B is in different direction, so we say minus B. And also the calculation of these the vectors A, B, C, so K is the resultant vector, K is equal, if you take this, this direction positive, K is equal A minus B, because B must be in that direction, eh? normally. So it is, it is uh, uh, clockwise, so like, like, like we have, so here, so this is the, let's say the positive direction. So it is in that direction and then positive direction and the positive direction. So therefore, you see this must be, it is not in that direction and this opposite direction. Therefore, it's negative, minus B plus C. Okay. So graphical method, you see the graphical method, we have the vector, vector, a and B, like the A is in that direction. This is the direction and the magnitude, yeah, direction, magnitude. Uh, and if we say, if we, uh, let's say, want to build the uh, resultant vector A minus B, so then we have to draw like this. So this is the A vector A must be parallel, eh? the vector A, okay, and the vector B, so vector B, and if you say the minus must be in this direction, eh? so this direction, and this is the resultant vector, resultant vector G. So, uh, okay, this is positive and this is negative because it is given in that direction, opposite direction. And here in K, for example, we have the A is positive in that direction, so it's A is positive. And minus B, minus B me means, so minus B means in that direction, so. Oh, no, this is not the, uh, I mean, not the. 
must be like this, huh? Yeah, okay. So, uh, minus B means so in that direction, okay. Then uh, plus C is in that direction. Okay, then this is the resultant force of the resultant vector here. So A po positive, B negative, minus B is in that direction. And then positive, that means the C is positive in that direction. This is the resultant vector. <clears throat> Place the vector, begin, subtract, uh, tip to tip maintaining direction so the next vector will be placed on the tail of vector being sub subtracted so the analytical method the uh, in uh, we can say this is a uh, g is equal to a minus b minus b okay b is minus b like this If it is minus B, some seems like this. So minus B, and this is the resultant vector G. And here <clears throat> K, uh, A minus B, this is the A minus B, like this here, minus B, okay. And C is the load, like this. So this is the resultant vector G here. Huh? So, okay. So the vector equations, so uh, equations can be written to describe vector polygon. And this is which we use actually in mechanism to make kinematic analysis. So uh, if we have a such a polygon, I mean vector polygon, that means A minus B minus D is equal C. So we or a is equal a is equal let's say uh, plus c plus d plus b so we can write a is equal so this same di always the same direction it is in that direction see in that direction and that and close the uh, vector polygon huh? so and all this uh, uh, summation of C, D, E, B, so B is equal A. C plus D plus B is equal A. Or we can write A minus B, like this here. This is A minus B is equal C plus D. Hmm? This is this is the vector. I mean, this is this is the vector. A minus B, and this is equal C plus D. So, or here, for example, we can write. So, uh, let's say A is equal here. A is equal F plus, if we take positive this direction, so this is positive direction. So, so A is equal F plus, sorry, A is equal f plus d minus c because in the different direction it's a, uh, opposite direction plus b plus b is equal say plus b minus a so can write in that way a is equal vector d uh, plus f plus d minus c plus b minus a so okay so here we have different equations you see a plus uh, a plus b plus c is equal d plus a plus f like the uh, vector polygon we had uh, here so this is 
A, B, C, so that's it. A, B, C, Okay, this is definitive. So, how can we how can we develop such a such a equations graphically? Well, here we have the a plus b. Where is a? Is that this? This is the a. Okay, and then plus b. Where is b? B is that? So plus b. Okay plus b plus c so then plus c like this plus c and then is equal is equal d where is d minus d if we take uh, to this side minus minus d where is it? Minus D, D, okay. Here, minus D, so that means it's minus D. Okay, minus D. And then plus E, because uh, if we take to, to, the, to, uh, to the left side of the equation, plus E, where is E? Is this one? Plus E is like this one and minus f so minus f so this is the um, this is the Uh, resultant vector. Huh? This is a plus, okay, a plus, and plus b, so plus b here, and then plus c, this is the c, plus c, and minus d, this is a d, because the direction of d is in that direction, minus d, and then is equal minus d, uh, so minus e plus e so where is e is here and plus so uh, we don't see now the in both direction but let's say this e here and this is the f and this is the resultant vector here so vectors represent magnitude and directions we can solve for either the magnitude plus direction of the one vector through magnitude of the vectors. So we can solve it in uh, components and we can show as a vector polygon. Uh, we can write as a, the analytic equation so that we can write in graphical graphical way. Sorry, so, I have a question. It, yes. Uh, how yes. Did, how did you know the direction of uh, F angle, F direction? Because we have arrows from the post. One second. So the the noise is okay. So so can you repeat the uh, question? E uh, E and F. How did you know the direction? So actually, we don't know from here because the, I, I assume that if it is, um, sorry for that moment. So, uh, uh, the E is normally, if it is, this, this is the equation. We can write this equation in that way. A, A, A plus, plus B, B plus C minus D plus E minus F. This is the G. Uh, 
vector g, that means the uh, resultant vector is equal. Huh? So, uh, since it is not directly shown here, uh, I assume that this is the, 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 let's say the vector a, or this is the vector f, the positive type, this is the, this is the I mean the vector a, and this is the vector f, if it is like this, so assuming that the f and e and f shown in that direction, the real, real, uh, 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 this is, uh, because it is shown in dot line, this is not, not understandable. So by assume that a, if f is like this, and then based on that, I uh, write the equations. Okay. And therefore, the minus a means minus a. Uh, so, uh, sorry, moment. So a is okay, positive. B is okay, positive. C is okay, positive. C is also in that direction. D is where is D? D is negative, must be negative. Okay, D is negative because this is in that direction. And F is D A is positive, A is positive. So ah hmm. A is positive, so then S is positive. So then it must be in that direction, it's not correct, so I have to change it. Sorry for that. So I will rebuild. So A must be, so A positive here, in that equation A positive, and A must be in that direction with the, the real vector A, and F is negative, so F must be in that direction. Where is F? So F must be, then, Uh, since it is negative, must be so in that direction. Okay. So, if we assume that the A and F is uh, the uh, in, in in that direction shown in the picture, then uh, our equation is correct. The resultant G is equal A plus because A is plus in that direction, and B is B plus B is also in that direction like this here let's use the laser pointer like this b and c plus where's the c c is okay also c is in that in the same direction <coughs> ah, sorry um, and then d negative because d is where's the d is in that direction be shown is uh, it is in that direction here so parallel but magnitude and the uh, uh, direction is okay, but since different, since opposite, so therefore minus d and plus e means plus e, so it must be same. E where is e? If, if it is e in that direction, so then we take it as positive to at the positive. Um, so then f is uh, if if it is in that direction, we have to show it in negative direction because this f is negative. So then. This is the resultant vector equations, uh, graphical vector vector equations, so vector polygon. And this is the equation, and this is the resultant vector G. Okay. So uh, another important definition, another important definition regarding the uh, vector calculations dot product. And you know that from the static, actually. Dot product means, uh, means so we have, uh, let's say, the vector A and B, and the dot product of A and B means A dot B is equal A scalar times base scalar times cosine theta. Theta is the angle in between. So dot product characteristic, but why we need that, we have used that, the resultant of so the results of the dot product is a scalar. So 
a dot b is the, the result is a scalar, not a vector. Uh, uh, scalar, a positive or negative number could be. So the unit, and this is this is the this is the uh, the left side, the right side of the equation. A scalar. That means we have to multiply this uh, scale, scale scalar of the shape magnitude of the A uh, times magnitude of the B uh, times the uh, cosine theta. Theta is the uh, angle between two vectors. So we use it in order to calculate the theta sometimes or to calculate the, this is the magnitude of the vectors and so on. So the, the second characteristic is the unit of the dot product will be the product of the units of the A and B vectors. So, and the dot product we can uh, uh, build the uh, uh, dot product by definition. I uh, dot G is zero because of the angle in between is this 90 degrees. So the uh, cosine 90 is zero. So I uh, dot I is equal one because this is the angle zero and cosine zero is one. So here this, if we uh, let's say write the dot product, the two vectors A dot B is equal. Uh, so this is the the the, uh, the multiplication you see here a so, so, so the vectors a x i a y g plus a z k and this is the vector b here and if you multiply and consider these uh, I mean the i i, uh, I dot g is zero i i uh, i dot i is one so at the end we have the equations like this here. Eh? So this is the result of the dot product. So if you know two, if you know these two vectors, I mean that I mean a x b x a y b y a z b z. So then uh, we can we can uh, calculate it and we can uh, uh, we we can uh, calculate the a dot b. And on the other hand, we say a uh, dot b is equal a dot b is equal a b cosine theta cosine theta. So then, if we know the magnitude of a, magnitude of b, and so if we can create these equations like this, so then we can calculate the theta in between that means the let's say this is the vector a this is the b a and b here then we can calculate the angle in between if you don't know that hmm? <clears throat> okay so uh, using the dot product to determine the angle between two, two, two vectors, we already discussed here. So we can determine the uh, angle between, the, between two vectors. Mm. As I mentioned it here, between 0 and 180. OK. Um, uh, the, another, another important uh, uh, vector calculations, vector cross product. So while finishing the moment, uh, while, uh, while finding the moment of a force in 2D is, is uh, straightforward uh, when you know the perpendicular distance, the uh, find the perpendicular distance can be hard, especially when, when you are working with forces in 3D dimensions. So, uh, so um, a more general approach to finding the moment of a force ex uh, existed, ex exists. So this uh, more general approach is usually used when uh, dealing with three-dimensional forces, but can be used in the two-dimensional <coughs> case as well. So as well, this uh, more general method of finding the moment of the force use uses a vector 
operations called the cross product of two vectors like this here. So with vector A and B, so if we um, uh, write, write the cross product and calculate the cross product, cross product is the also is a vector here like C here. And uh, that means A uh, cross B is equal to C and C is also a vector. And this vector is perpendicular to the plane uh, in which A and B are. So like this, in general, the cross product of, uh, of two vectors A and B result in another vector C uh, and C is equal to A cross B. The magnitude and the direction of the result, uh, resulting vector can be written as C is equal to A times B is equal to A. B this is the magnitude A, B. So then if you see that in red color, that means the vector. If blue, then it's scalar. Huh? So A uh, times B, this means the magnitude of A, magnitude of B, uh, sine theta. And this is the unit vector of, um, uh, I mean, of C here, the C unit vector. So as shown, U is the unit vector perpendicular to both A and B vectors. So uh, then uh, you can oh, John, much more. So yeah. Can we please finish here because we have another session? At yeah, I'm, I'm finishing. I'm finishing now. Okay, thank you. I'm finishing. Okay, so uh, one or two, two slides, not more. So the the right hand uh, rules we use to uh, to uh, uh, for ca for calculation cross product cross product. And you see here, the, for example, i cross g is k, and uh, i cross i is equal zero comes from these uh, right hand rules, and you can you know that from the static. And here, a cross b is equal. So here's the the equations you see uh, the the for element i, for element g, for element k. It is shown here how you can calculate it, and why is it here negative, and why uh, air positive and so on. All you know from the static, more or less, is repeating. So uh, cross product um, is also an, an example here uh, for uh, for a vector, the 3D for two 3D vectors. Uh, the results of the uh, cross product. Okay, thank you for the day. Thank you, teacher. So uh, see you next week. And uh, next week, maybe maybe I can show you. Oh, sorry. Uh, if you have one minute, so I can show you the book we are going to follow. So this is the uh, what is the name? Uh, sorry, machine. doctor. Will you will you upload uh, the slides? Machine machine and, and you will you will get it from the internet machine and. Mechanism. So the book PDF, okay. So the machine is So we will study from this book. We will, uh, you will not give us slides, right? The slides, I will share also the slides with you, but the book's also important. You will read, you, you will learn. Okay. And how about machine design also, same thing. Uh-huh. Oh, John, will you give any homework? This is something, oh, this is something interesting. I'm, I'm seeing first time. I, I'm, I, uh -huh. This is also interesting. This also you can use, huh? No problem. I will show another one, huh? 
but this is also let's let's uh, keep it because I'm I'm seeing this first time I uh, okay. But, but you can use it, huh? So this one. Theory of machines and mechanism. This is from Oxford. That's very good, good book, very good book, yes. Okay, there's another one. This is the so another one is this one, huh? So this this is also a good one. You can get from the internet, huh? If this is the pre pre upload, uh, uh, you can pre upload. Uh, from the, the David H. Mezak. This is from, from Pearson. So these two books I will recommend. Any question? John? Yes. Will you give any homework? Uh, yes, I will give homework, but uh, not today. Thank you, teacher. You are welcome. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. So, have a nice, have a nice week. Bye bye. But jump, don't forget the recording, please. To stop. Recording what? To stop the recording. Ojan. To stop the. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye bye.